The Oculus Touch Controllers are well worth the wait. I really liked the Oculus Rift when it launched back in March, but its lack of motion control severely limited its virtual reality experiences. And that became an even bigger issue when motion controls end up being one of the best parts of the HTC Vive, and even Sony managed to bring it over to the much cheaper PlayStation VR. Now, nine months after the Rift was released, Oculus finally has a path of truly immersive VR with its 199 touch controllers. The first thing you'll notice about them is that they don't look typical. They're more like how a sci-fi film would imagine a gaming controller in the far future. They're contoured for your left and right hands, so there's little chance you'll be confused which controller you're holding. Getting started with them is surprisingly easy. After plugging in two AA batteries, you just need to slip your hands over their rounded handles and your fingers will naturally fall into place. Both controllers feature analog sticks, two standard face buttons, triggers that you'll hit with your index fingers, and grip buttons that you'll hit with your middle fingers. There's also a menu button on the left controller, which opens up different options depending on the game you're playing, and an Oculus Home button on the right controller. Their prominent circular rings help with motion tracking, but you won't ever be holding those during gameplay. It's pretty clear that Oculus spent plenty of time refining these things. They're lighter and far smaller than the motion controllers on the HTC Vive and PlayStation VR, which makes them better suited for diving into extended VR sessions. And they're not just fancy props either, they feel like legitimately great gaming controllers. The buttons, triggers, and analog sticks simply feel good. They're responsive with a solid amount of feedback. The touch controllers also feature a variety of gestures that don't involve pressing down on buttons at all. They're smart enough to detect when your fingers are just resting on a button or being held above them. It could, for example, track your index finger when you're pointing it in the air. The controllers come with an extra Oculus sensor, which allows the Rift to track you while you're standing in place. You can also add a third sensor behind you for $79 for true room scale support. Aside from the hardware itself, there are also quite a few games that take advantage of the new controllers. In the demo for Robocall, I was able to easily shoot down and tear apart waves upon waves of bad bots. The shooting mechanics felt smooth and accurate, and the touch controllers didn't have any trouble being tracked as I spun around in my home office. I've heard that game is even better with the third Rift sensor, but I honestly didn't notice any issues. The controllers also held up for a more frenetic title like Serious Sam VR, though that game is so hectic it ended up being physically tiring to play for too long. That's the difference between gaming in VR and on a keyboard and mouse. You can't just sit and relax, you actually have to get up and move your arms, legs, and trigger fingers. The Oculus Touch controllers also worked well for slow paced experiences too. In the spy game, I Expect You to Die, they were adept at moving objects through complex laser traps or handling beakers full of explosive liquids. I also didn't have any trouble sketching out 3D drawings with the Quill app, which comes free with the touch controllers. On top of that app, the controllers also come with the sculpting app Medium and the western shooter Dead and Buried. At $199, the touch controllers bring the total cost of the Rift system in line with the $800 HTC Vive, but you'll have to shell out another $79 for true room scale VR. Overall, the touch controllers add a lot to the Rift experience, and they're far more refined than competing motion controllers on the Vive and PSVR. If you prefer the fit of the Oculus Rift, like me, then they're a must-have for your VR rig.